it's Mary from SVG Cuts here with some new projects for Father's Day, guys, girls, all kinds of stuff. So with Father's Day coming up really soon, I thought these would be some really fun, cute designs um, for a lot of guys that I know love burgers and, you know, beer or soda and fishing. So you could certainly also make these as birthday cards, depending on the, uh, you know, you could use different colored stars and put a birthday birthday stamp on there and if you don't have a square stamp you could put something else you know like another star or or write something or what have you so um, someone in the comments section on Facebook suggested um, that they were going to turn this into a sewing basket which is super cool and I would love to see how that turns out that's a great idea and of course you know this could be a, like a birthday soda pop um, six pack doesn't have to be beer but of course it could also be beer so the cool thing about the box cards is that they fold flat to go inside their envelope and each one has an envelope that fits it perfectly so when you give it to someone they take it out of the envelope and boom dimensional super cool so those are always a lot of fun and I hope you have a great time putting yours together so as always your download comes with a PDF document that shows you all the shapes laid out as well as the way that the inserts go together so when we put these together here in just a minute I will point that out in your in your PDF also so the paper that I used this time is really cool um, I didn't use that much of it but it's still still awesome I've had it in my stash for a little while I got it from a cherry on and it's it's by a company called Ruby Rocket, which I had never heard of before I got this paper. Really cool, vintage, nice and thick. Love the, um, the imagery, especially these labels, really cool. So that was a lot of fun to work with, but like I always say, whatever kind of paper you have in mind is gonna look awesome, I'm sure. So these stamps, I am really getting my, my use out of these stamps. I used them last year for Father's Day. I bought them at Michael's, they're by Hero Arts, and it's, um, LP332, which is also on the, the product page on svgcuts.com, as well as listed in your PDF, which always has all the little extra, extra bits of information like that in there. So I have the Mother's Day one and the Father's Day one, and I, this is the second year in a row that I've used them um, again and again because they're just really cool, nice and simple, extremely useful. Um, they still do have them on, I think, Amazon and eBay, I saw them if you're looking for these exact stamps. Um, otherwise, whatever you want to use, or you can just write something on there with a fine tip black marker, or whatever you want to do is going to be great. So I've got all my pieces cut out to show you how these cards go together, so let's get started. First of all, for our burger box card, we've got the box itself, which is the bun, and that gets folded like this. So there are some little score lines that are right next to each other at the top and at the bottom and we want it to be folded like this so it creates a little recessed area there in the center so go ahead and fold both of your bun pieces like that and I've gone ahead and folded mine like this. And then we can glue them together side to side. So I've got some glue on those two little tabs. And I will glue that together on both, both pieces. And then we can go ahead and put our little burger parts together. So you have three pieces that look like this, which is the patty down there, and you fold it over and you glue your cheese right onto that. And you can go ahead and glue that at the bottom, right in the center, right up against the bottom. And then there are three pieces that look like this, which is the tomato down here. You fold the top over, glue your lettuce onto it, and then glue your little onion in place. And I always love to ink the edges of all my shapes. I did not do that for the, the ones that I have here in my hand. 
but on my, my original card, I inked the edges of each shape. So for example, around the edge of the green, I would ink it with some green. Around the edge of the orange, I inked it with some darker orange. Around the edge of the onion there, I, I rubbed some like plum red to make it look more like an onion. And I rubbed some brown around the edges of the bun. So go ahead and put these three on the three sides of your burger. And then on the very back, you can glue your little rectangle. If you have a stamped sentiment or you want to write something on there, you can do that. And then once you've got all three sides of your burger, as you can see in your PDF document up here at the top for this box card, just like all the other box cards, I have the embellishment layouts laid out, so one, two, and three. And you don't have to do it exactly like I've done it. I think it still looks cool if you want to change it up a little bit. The stars don't even have to be centered or the same way. It kind of looks cool if they're off center and turned a little bit. So once you've got your three inserts glued together how you want, and you are all ready to uh, glue them in with the back facing away from you, you want to glue number one right onto the inside. So I folded those tabs towards myself and put some glue on them. And that's just going to sit right inside the top. Nice and perpendicular, lots of right angles going on in there. And before it's completely dry, you want to fold it carefully back and forth to make sure it's nice and going to lay down flat. Then you can do the same thing with insert number two. I've got those tabs folded towards me with some glue on them. And that's just going to sit right on the inside. So the the tabs are flush with, with the bottom and with the, the piece in front of it. So it just sits right inside. Then for insert number three, I've got the tabs folded away from me. And I'm going to set that right inside with the back of the tabs flush with the back of the box and the bottom flush with that little lip down there in the bottom. So there are my fun inserts and yours will look like this. So to get these little sesame seeds, I took this white gel pen, which I got at the craft store. I got it at Michael's. I've, I've gotten them. I have several. I've gotten them all over the place. But I just made some little ovals, kind of spaced out, twisted and turned in little different directions. And it looks super cute. Oops, that one's a little, a little messed up, but you get the idea if you would like to do that too. So when this box card is folded flat, it kind of <clears throat> is a little large. So I had to break the envelope apart into two pieces. So this is envelope one. You want to flip that over. The top and the bottom are the same. And then these two sides are also the same. So to glue that together, you just want to glue the side here right onto the side on the inside and do that do the same thing on the other same thing on the other side glue that into place so that creates the envelope starting to look more like what you're used to for an envelope then you can go ahead and Put some glue on the bottom. This is how I like to glue the bottom onto the sides. And mine, my sides are a little bit off, so the corners are a little unhappy, but, but you get the idea. So there's your envelope. You can put your card inside, close it up, and there you go. Next for our six-pack box card, I went ahead and glued my panels onto my two um, main parts of the carton. So there's some circular panels and some funny shaped panels, which mine happen to be red. So this is how it looks. This is the front, then the next side, then the back, and then the other side. So we can go ahead and glue our little, our little banner 
into place. And I went ahead and stamped the sentiment that I wanted on there, which is super cute. We can, if you have some um, dimensional dots or zots or pop dots, that looks really cute underneath this little top banner. And then we can put some glue on the side tab and glue that into place. And close it up by doing the same thing on the other side. And then for our, our inserts, once again, in your PDF document, it shows the way that they're laid out, one, two, and three. Pretty straightforward, and I went ahead and glued my bottles, as well as the bottle caps, the neck labels, and the labels into place. One and three look the same, and then insert number two looks like this. And you just want to fold that over and glue that right into place. So to glue these into place, I'm going to fold these tabs toward me on insert number one. And I want to glue that right inside with the front of the tab flush with the front of the box so that it's just right underneath the top of the carton there. And then for insert number two, I'm going to fold these tabs towards me, put some glue on them, and glue these guys right into place. And you want that tab to be lined up with the pointy, pointy side of the carton there. It lines up just right. And before it's totally dry, let's give it a quick, gentle fold back and forth to make sure that it's going to fold flat. And then for insert number three, I've got the tabs folded away from me. And once again, they are, those tabs are flush with the back of the box. And they're just underneath the top of the box. So there we go, super cute. And now if you would like to, if you have some pop dots or zots or something, I think that's really cute to kind of pop this off on the side. And then, <clears throat> that's what I've done here, is used some pop dots. Then for our envelope, the pointy part here is the top. These are the two sides, and the round flap is the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue, which I'm running out of, on these two side flaps at the bottom and fold the bottom up into place. Then you can insert your card. I think you should fold it this way just because of this thing. It doesn't really matter, but it folds better this way. You can slide that right in and close it up, seal it up however you want. Finally, for our tackle box card, I've got these two main pieces here, and I went ahead and folded this top part over, and I creased up here in one, two, three, four spots, as well as like this. And I went ahead and glued these panels into place. And as you can see, this kind of has two little little cutouts underneath where these kind of aim towards, which looks similar to over here. So I also went ahead and creased up here. So I've got four pieces that look like this, and I'm going to go ahead and center that nicely on those little arms on both of these. Oops, like so. And then I've got these little donut shaped glitter studs by Queen and Company. And I think those look really cute for um, putting one, two, three, one, two, three. It kind of looks like, uh, kind of like the real thing. So you want to go ahead and do the same thing on the other one. Just center those. And if you don't have those little donut shaped glitter studs, um, some enamel dots or little buttons or whatever, whatever you have would look really cute. Um, 
Then for this little, this little guy, this is the handle part, and I just folded it in half and I glued the, the panel on top of it. So then we can put some glue on the back side and glue that right into the center of this little flap that folds over. So next we can put some glue on this side tab here and glue these guys together like this. And then this is the back side, looks like this. And I went ahead and glued my panel down here. So we can go ahead and glue that into place, like so. And then we can close up the box with some glue on this side tab and glue the back closed. So then the back folds backwards so that it looks like the lid is open. And I went ahead and glued this rectangular panel on the side here, as well as the same sized one on this side. There's a green panel underneath this white one with the stamped sentiment on it. And we can go ahead and glue that into place like this. So that just forms a little box shape that hangs off the back, hinged. So it looks like a little lid, like it's open. So next, what I want to do is fold this around to create a little box shape. So I'm going to put some glue on this little small tab and glue that right into place so that the top is even so that it's all even up there. And I will do the same thing on the other side. Close this up to create a little box. So the next thing I'm going to do is glue the front of my top drawer into place. So that, that's a green piece that looks like this, and I put a little skinny panel here, as well as this shiny oval with the hook on it. So what we're going to do is just glue that right onto the front. So to do that, I can put some glue on this little rectangle and glue this right on top with the top, the top of it flush with the top of the piece behind it. And then the same thing right here with this guy. So that creates a cute little cute little drawer with some little compartments in it. So it really looks like a, a tackle box. So if, if you take a look in your PDF, it shows you the top drawer here. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that little worm back there, which is, it doesn't really matter which color you want. There's a couple different worms included in your download. So I'm going to glue that behind it right there. And once again, I use these same little glitter studs for a lot of the the lures. I, I glued, I, they're sticky so I put some of them behind them to look like a like a loopable thing you can tie fishing line onto or as the eye. Um, so then for the back of the top drawer that one's probably got the most little embellishments on it. So what I did is, okay here is the, this is how it cuts out, and that's how it's going to get glued on, just like we did before. So we can go ahead and glue that into place with some glue on. I'm going to fold my lid out of the way there and glue this right into place with the top of it flush. And some glue back here with that top corner meeting up right there and glue that into place. 
so next, if you would like, you can see the way that the back of the top drawer is laid out there. Um, I went ahead and glued the white part onto my bobber so we can put some glue on that and glue that into place as well as this cute little guy. If you have a marker you can just draw a little dot for his little eyeball there and glue that into place. And then for this guy I took some tool. I have a little tiny piece of orange tool which I happened to buy at Michael's. They have a bunch of different colors of tool. So what I want to do is I have these sticky squares which I'm going to use to glue the tool into place. I'm going to fold it up and then I'm going to trim away a little bit of it and then I'm going to carefully cut these little finger-like pieces into thinner, thinner parts. I originally wanted this to be thinner, but then my cutting machine was kind of like, oh, that's a little too thin there, Mare. <laughs> so then you can go ahead and glue this guy right into place on the back. Then I have some extra little worms here. However you want to put them is totally fine. It doesn't have to be exactly like the way I did mine. I think it looks cute like this. But whatever you want to do is cool. So there's our top drawer. And now for the bottom drawer, I went ahead and I glued, this is the back of it. I went ahead and glued this green panel onto the front as well as the white and red to make the bobber, which is just attached up here on the front. And then these hooks, the head, and the white part of this lure. So this is going to go behind it, this piece like this. Now I'm going to put some glue back there, glue that into place, and then put some glue on this fish and the rectangle underneath it and glue that right into place. So then we can glue this inside like this with some glue on the side. Glue that right into place there. And then the same thing on the other side with some glue on this tab. Like this. And then we can, this worm, I'm going to glue the worm on after I put this in place. So this is the back side of that drawer. So we want to glue the side into place on both sides. And we are almost done. Just got to get my worm in place and then put my insert in. So then you can go ahead and you can leave that, that background worm, you can leave it how it is, or you could put a, uh, you could glue this worm back there if you would like. Oh, I forgot to, I forgot to glue, I did forget to glue this, uh, the back of this little compartment into place. So we just want that to. You just want some glue on that and then you want to fold it back and forth to make sure that it's centered nicely and that it's going to
fold flat. So once the back of that little compartment is glued into the bottom drawer there, you've got a couple leftover worms. You can put them wherever you think looks cute. And then for our insert, again, in your PDF, you can see how it looks with the, the two lures and this little spool. So I went ahead and glued this and this on. And then for this guy, I think it looks nice if you've got some pop dots or zots. If you put three of them on and actually double them up, I think that looks cool. That's what I did. So I put three of these. These are called Zots by ThermoWeb. I use them all the time for dimension. So I put three of them on and then I put three more on top of those. And then I put the back on and then I glued that here. And I actually took some twine and wrapped it around there. And I also put some more little decorative twine. If you can kind of see down there, I just looped it up and tied it up to look like more fishing line. So once you are happy with your little insert, you want to bend those tabs towards you, put some glue on them, and they go right inside the, right inside here. And they're flush with the front of the box. And before it's completely dry, you want to fold it both ways to make sure it's going to fold flat nicely. So that is your tackle box. And here's mine with the inking and the, all the little embellishments. It looks, looks super cute. So again, this envelope is pretty similar to, to every other envelope. But just in case you would like to know, the, uh, the bottom flap is the round one. And you just want to put some glue on those bottom flaps, or the bottom of the side flaps fold that bottom into place and then when you're ready to put your card in you can fold it flat carefully fold it flat like this and it fits right inside and you can really flatten it out and get it in there so of course if you're going to mail it you would probably want to put it in a padded envelope or you know some extra packaging but there you go so there you have it really cool dimensional cards for father's day birthdays and beyond I hope you have a great time making them, and if you do, as usual, I would love to see a picture on Facebook or put it on your blog and then pin it on Pinterest, um, upload it to Instagram, and hit do, you know, at SVG Cuts, or if you pin it on Pinterest, do um, like hashtag SVG Cuts. Um, that just makes it easier for me to find it so I can see your amazing project. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time, and happy crafting.